Weeks. It's Monday, September 18th, 2023. Coming up on the program today, a demon made mead skeleton eat a whole box of Entenmann chocolate donuts. Plus, one trans person struggle with a vicious cycle of constipation and diarrhea when the doctor you're driving around won't shut up about his tiny penis and blowing up a balloon with stomach gas. Distorted View Daily proudly presents Cheryl Murkowski reading another Tinder success story. Last night, I had my first share of smegma. It was a wonderful Tinder date, and we went to the drive-in to see the new Happy Death Day. His windows are pretty tinted up, so we got away with fooling around during the movie. To my surprise, I uncovered a wealth of smegma underneath his thick, chipping foreskin. It was unlike any smegma porn I ever saw. He said he was embarrassed, but I just looked at him seductively and, without saying a word, licked and chewed up all the man butter from his five-inch dulongus. He told me to keep eating it slowly and stroke him with the chewed up parts. (laughs) So I did. Needless to say, he came like a New York train and I sucked better than the movie that night. My stomach hurts for some reason now and I can't stop hiccuping. (laughs) But it was a wonderful night and I appreciate this. group for all this magma sharing heart emoji all hate comments will be chewed and swallowed by me the distorted view show with tim henson you know optimus prime is my husband nigga crystal mass loosens up your butthole the vagina is full of ace welcome to 1-800 asshole oh i pussy oh i pussy oh i pussy oh i pussy yeah Tim Henson back here with you to kick off a new week of programs. Hope you all had a great weekend. I sure did. Uh, You know, lately on the podcast, we've been discussing and featuring trans people frequently, uh, which makes sense since it seems that everyone is talking about them. Uh, It's a real hot button issue. Uh, Topic du jour. Let's be honest. It can also be incredibly funny. Take the case of the GameStop, ma'am. We just updated you on last week. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. I can call the police if you'd like me to. You need to settle down. You need to settle down and mind your business, okay? Ma'am, once again, ma'am. I said both of you. No, you said sir. Once again, it's ma'am. I actually said both of you guys. Right beforehand, you fucking said sir. Sir? That's my favorite part, because the GameStop employee is so nervous, he accidentally calls her sir again, and that's really what sets off the GameStop ma'am. Right beforehand, you fucking said sir. Sir? Motherfucker, take it outside if you want to call me sir again. He's like, how dare you call me ma'am? Motherfucker! Yeah! Step into a slip gym! It's like the least feminine voice anyone has ever put on like you gotta at least try put a little effort into it i will show you a fucking sir i apologize motherfucker i apologize and there goes the five nights at freddy's display hulk smashed into smithereens look uh still you know we in the media (laughs) i like to pretend that i'm a part of the media have a tendency to uh, lump the experience and views of all trans people together into uh, you know one movement trans people though like genitals are like snowflakes women's genitals are as individual as snowflakes and every bit as exquisite to be fair i've seen some not so exquisite genitals real mangled snowflakes young girls need to see beautiful genital imagery and to be told about the clitoris being the source of their sexual pleasure you need to update your curriculum honey not all women have clits they could also learn about different cultures and ancient goddess religions when people actually worship the divine vulva as the gateway for all of human life look you know pussy is something else This is coming from a gay man. I don't understand it. You know, it's it's sci-fi to me. It's like a Stargate. But I, uh, you know, I can can appreciate it. 
I stand in wonder of the goddamn thing. And so do trans people, I'm sure. I'm getting off topic here. Look, everyone is different. They don't all feel the same way about gender politics or even what they consider offensive. Despite how they're all portrayed, this isn't some sort of tranny hive mind situation we've got going on here. Now, to prove this point, I've got uh, two examples here of very different trans people expressing themselves in a not so standard way for the non-binary people. And actually, the first situation here is a lot like uh, the GameStop scenario. I was just misgendered in my local FedEx. Except it took place in a FedEx. Yep. The woman behind the counter asked her coworker, did you help that guy yet? And after further observation, she goes, or lady. See, immediately, my thoughts were, cancel this woman. Ruin her entire life because she called me what I look like. Just kidding. That's what y'all would do. You didn't scream and then knock over a rack of envelopes? I, on the other hand, am aware that I look like a guy. Look at me. Am I a guy? Nope, just a dyke. I don't know if, the, I don't even know if this person is trans <laughs> because her username is Steven something, right? But this is your message. If you look like a guy, they're going to call you a guy. If you look like a chick, they're going to call you a chick, regardless of what you identify as, okay? And stop taking it so personally. In fact, you'd be a little happier if you could laugh sometimes. Laugh at it. I'm sorry. That aggressiveness is really throwing off some male energy. You are further confusing me. Ha ha. It's funny. It's funny, okay? It's funny. I think that's a good healthy take, ultimately. This person, whether she's a lesbian, trans, a man, or something in between, I think she's going to live a lot longer life than the GameStop man, who uh, I think is about due for a heart attack based on how she responds to most situations. Bah! Now, uh, for the other trans clip I have for you, we have to turn our attention to the Discord and thank TV listener Slapplebags. Slapplebag says, I've been following this, uh, we'll say trans, trans TikTok for a while, and it finally paid off. Now, this has really nothing to do with gender identity, but it just shows you there are all sorts of uh, trans people out there. Some are political, some are not at all. This person is way more occupied with Pokemon and uh, his or her shits. My kind of people. By the way, uh, this person's name is Sammy. She uh, wants to be called Samantha. So, okay, this is Samantha. So, like, I'm tired, but I'm afraid to go to sleep because of the um, uh, the the stool softener I took and the fact that I was having basically diarrhea since ten o'clock last night. I've got uh, several TikToks from Samantha here, and she's either constipated or shitting her brains out. Those are the two modes of Samantha. I guess right now she's shitting her brains out. I don't recommend taking stool softener unless you absolutely need it. And I've been constipated for about 10 days. So I always take a stool softener um, after 10 days because I know at about 10 days it's a problem and I might need to go see the doctor. The point is, in this video, she uh, she noticed she hadn't shit in 10 days. She took the stool softener and now she won't stop pooping. It usually ends up with me having a lot of stuff come out of me. Now, you have to understand, uh, in all these clips, they're not connected. These aren't like, uh, you know, TikTok videos posted one right after another. They're you know, the different months, different days, different uh, constipation cycles. Like, here's one from August 22nd. I just pooped and it felt amazing. I'm so happy that I figured out why I was constipated and now I'm pooping. And I'm pooping and I'm pooping strong. Unfortunately, sometimes she poops a little too strong. I just shit my pants. I was playing Pokemon and then not paying attention to my body and just, bam, shit my pants. And uh, we might be back to constipation here. So anyway, while I was constipated, I decided that I was going to take the uh, stool softener route because the vegetables, the water, the fruit, and the moving around didn't work. So I took the stool softeners. Um, and then I ended up, well, basically for the last two. Look, I know you're trans and uh, technically you haven't been a woman for that long. Uh, this is not how ladies talk. Half hours, <laughs> I have been pooping my brains out and normally that doesn't feel good. But today, 
Whew, today, after about 10 days of being constipated, it feels amazing. Yeah, but you feel a lot lighter. Uh, moving on, yeah, this video was just posted three days ago, so now we're into, uh, you know, mid-September uh, here. I pooped my pants this morning. Back to that. I also pooped my pants three weeks ago, seven weeks ago, yeah, and for... Back in August, yes, we covered that. <laughs> 143 consecutive days at one point. Yeah, Samantha talks about that in another video. Let me see if I can track that one down. That's kind of interesting. I think she's a shit freak, honestly, right? I mean, you have to be if you're going to, you know, shit yourself for over 100 days straight. Now, we're, we're assuming here that she's telling us the truth, that she's not trolling us. Let's uh, listen and see if her story makes sense. It was 143 consecutive days because I was going for the record. So what happened was for about 10 days in a row, I crapped my pants by accident. That's believable. I'm with you so far. Uh, and then on the 11th day, I went to Applebee's. And as we all know, if I go to Applebee's, I crap my pants. Okay. So I was like, well, OK. And then I just kept crapping my pants on purpose because I was like, well, I might as well try to go for the record. Uh, and then I was like, you know what? On the 144th day, I ended up with constipation. Well, that put an end to your streak. Um, which was not fun. One more clip here about her constipation and subsequent uh, shitting spree. I ended up taking a stool softener uh, Sunday night, Sunday evening. Uh -huh. um, and then the m morning on Monday, I was in the bathroom for about four hours. And then I just wasn't paying attention to my body and ended up crapping my pants because I was too hyper focused on Pokemon. Uh, because I really want to finish the Pokedex in uh, Brilliant Diamond, and I've got a, I've got 223 of 491 Pokemon. So, like, I'm doing a really cl good job of that. Uh, Very important work being done here. So occasionally, yeah, she's going to slip up, not listen to her body, and shit herself. Hopefully I can get some more later, but we'll see what happens with everything, because, I don't know, I'm... I'm actually right now watching season 21 of Hell's Kitchen, just kind of binging it. Um, Sounds like there might be another unforeseen crap in your future. I wasn't listening to my body. I was focused on Gordon Ramsay. Because I didn't watch it when it aired, because I like to watch Hell's Kitchen as a binge. Look, no one cares about your thoughts on Hell's Kitchen. We're all here for your shit stories. This is like the trans version of my aunt. Stay away from salads. You know, we all have our triggers, apparently. My aunt, salad, and soda. That's what makes her crap herself. This guy, anything from Applebee's, totally understandable. You know what? Honestly, I think anything from Applebee's would give my aunt the shits as well. All right, let's move on. Well, you know it's going to be a good week when I've got new Mead content on a Monday. You know, usually Mead does his dopey little singing shows on Sunday. You know, he'll do like a live stream where he sings old Confederate war songs or whatever. You know, he has theme nights occasionally. This week was a little different. We didn't get a, a Mead singing live stream. We got a vlog on his second YouTube channel, or maybe third, the Mead Fit and Lean channel. This is quickly becoming my favorite Mead channel. If you've been away for a while, Mead has decided to lose weight and share his experiences online. We're doing this together. Every Wednesday, he does a weigh-in. He talks about his diet, his workout routine. I've seen some uh, YouTube shorts with him actually on the machines. Oh, it's hilarious. Everything about this channel is gold. What I am most fascinated with is the psychology of Mead. I think none of us really believed Mead was going to lose a substantial amount of weight. He's been on about 97 diets since we started following him. So this was obviously going to flame out in spectacular fashion in some way, shape or form. I just love witnessing it in real time. The first problem Mead had was uh, with that idea of doing a Wednesday weigh in. Again, the premise was, you know, Mead was going to discover his weight uh, along with us. We were all going to find out together at the same time. Mead would only weigh himself on camera once a week on Wednesdays. In that first update, the first Wednesday weigh-in after, you know, after he started this thing, he was shocked to learn that he actually gained weight. And then he was like, well, I've got a, a little confession. I actually weighed myself yesterday and I, uh, I weighed less. So I think this is just water weight. So we're starting this whole journey off, you know, with a lie. Mead's not even being honest with how he's weighing himself. 
We all know this motherfucker is weighing himself every day, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but be honest with your viewers, right? In this most uh, current week, he actually waited an extra day, and you know it was because he weighed himself on Wednesday, and he either hadn't lost weight or maybe gained a pound. Now, look, weight fluctuates. I'm not saying Mead's gaining, you know, 10, 15 pounds every week or something, but obviously Mead weighed himself on Wednesday, wasn't happy with the results, didn't want to share it with everyone, and then waited a day or two. Um, Sometimes I think that my scale might be um, having demonic influence, you know, because the demons don't want me to lose weight and they want me to be frustrated. That's the other great thing about having a complete religious kook going on a weight loss journey. None of this is a result of, of overeating. If he doesn't lose weight in a week, there obviously has to be uh, a supernatural exp- explanation. The, the bathroom scale is possessed by the devil. Yeah, that, that makes the most sense here. So I don't know if that's it or just something else. By the way, he's still trying to pay off his $13,000 credit card bill from all the DoorDash orders. Today's weight is 289.4 pounds. I mean, he started at 293, right? Or 295 or 290. I don't know. The point is he's at least lost one or two pounds. It's not going super fast for me. At least it's going in the right direction. Still, Mead thinks demonic forces are at play. Again, I think, you know, some demonic influences are happening, you know, to impede my weight loss or to make it look like I'm not losing enough weight because obviously everyone thinks that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, that video was posted on September 14th. That was his weekly weigh-in. I have a sneaking suspicion that things are continuing to spiral out of control for me. (laughs) They're continuing to not go his way. You know, we know he's on the scale every day checking stuff out. And maybe that's what led to this Sunday's video titled The Demons of Obesity. Now, a lot of people say obesity is completely organic. Um, You eat too much and you get fat. Let me put forth another theory, which is I believe a fat spell was put on me. By an evil, wicked, demonic woman. Maybe a succubus. Maybe that woman who sat on his uh, head. Remember that time he suffered uh, sleep paralysis? <laughs> and he was like, oh, it's a succubus. She straddled me. She wanted to fuck me. And then uh, she, she turned into like a, a like a disgusting old uh, evil creature. Maybe she didn't like being shot down, you know, by Mead, and so she put a spell on him. But we have to look at the spiritual aspects of obesity, too. And I do believe that obesity can be uh, demonically influenced. Um, Now, today, folks, today I was was doing really well, and all of a sudden I just had this urge to splurge. And I had a strawberry shortcake, and then a little bit of (laughs) banana bread pudding, and then... (laughs) Two two desserts. Some cookies. Oh, three desserts. Mm -hmm. And I was doing fine until this thing came in. And I believe that this is... (laughs) called cravings, meat. (laughs) A demonic um, entity that tries to get me to agree with it, so I'll overeat, and it'll ruin my progress, because... Um, the enemy wants to destroy us, right? He wants us fat and ugly. And um, so we have to resist these things. But we can rebuke uh, demonic influences of obesity. Now- it's like, okay, well, why didn't you do that then? You gave in to it. You did not rebuke. You ate those Oreos and banana pudding and <laughs> strawberry shortcake. Worst part is... I was at the gym when I was eating it. <laughs> He's on the machine, shoveling that banana pudding down his gullet. I-, I spilled my strawberry shortcake all over the elliptical. Oh, no. I love that Mead tells us what to do. You just got to rebuke those demons, but he can't practice what he preaches. I had 17 desserts last night. That's after his very healthy dinner of fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, and biscuits and gravy. Dad wanted breakfast for dinner. All right, that's enough mead for today. I look forward to Wednesday's weigh-in. You know what else I love? This will be the last thing on me. This is real quick, but I just have to mention this. I love how whenever mead starts a new channel, it just it turns into the same fucking bullshit, right? So 
Mead starts his channel to uh, chronicle his weight loss adventure and share, you know, tips and tricks like nutrition, what to eat, what exercises to do. And what is happening now? He's doing all he's doing a 10 minute video on the demons of obesity, which is a video that would feel perfectly at home on Mead's normal channel. He can't help himself. Anyway, just I had that observation. All right, let's move on. Once again, turning our attention to the Discord's got to say thanks to Great Big Pete for submitting a video. Been a while since we've had a good airplane freak out, so uh, let's try this one. It's not just the religious talk that's annoying, it's the shrieking voice. That's what puts it over the edge, right? Jesus! Jesus is the only way! By the way, there's no turbulence or anything. People are just sitting there enjoying their movies, their beverages, their little peanuts, what have you. Seems like a pretty chill flight, honestly, except for this banshee. <laughs> Jesus is the only one coming here. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Someone in the comments had an idea, and I think this is brilliant. Let's get these uh, flight attendants certified so they can actually use uh, tranquilizing darts. I think this shit has happened enough times that we, you know, we need to find a way to put these people down for a while. Okay, I'm going to fast forward a bit here. Yeah, I'll fast forward some more. Uh, and some more. And some more. And some more. And some more. And we've reached the end of the video. Well, thank you very much, Great Big Pete, for that one minute, 44 second screaming video. Ta-da! Ta-da! Gauntlet also provided a link to a video, so thank you very much for submitting this, Gauntlet. It is a Tamir update, and I know we just gave an update on Tamir not too long ago, but the freaks in the Discord seem to really like this one. I haven't seen it yet myself, so uh, let's watch this together, or listen to it together. Hey guys, I was wondering... This is a very different tone for a Tamir video. Why, of all the superheroes, both Marvel and DC, and even Dragon Ball... Mm, Tamir is a Dragon Ball Z fan. It's kind of interesting, right? The only superhero that is mentally unstable, or rather completely insane, is the Hulk. Huh, Tamir might actually have a point here. The Hulk is the only one that really like, flies off the handle, like, you know, Hulk smash. He gets angry and stuff. And you can't control him for a while. I mean, they are all powerful. Right. I mean, take Iron Man or Thor, for example. They are not less powerful than the Hulk, even more. But that power doesn't drive them insane. Well, it's the gamma radiation, Tamir. I mean, come on. That shit will fuck with your head. I mean, he's like a raging beast and completely retarded. <laughs> yeah, kinda. I see where you're coming from. First, he goes out of control, berserk, de destroying everything in his path. Like a retarded beast. <laughs> And then, when he meets a woman that is to his liking, he suddenly becomes weak and frail and pathetic. Wait a minute! So I would like to understand why. Is it the training, or is it simply the person retarded? Alright, new fan theory for you guys to discuss and debate. Tamir thinks the Hulk may just be retarded. That's what's giving him his super strength. Ah, there's some logic there. Good job, Tamir. Finally, before we get into the news, gotta say thanks to DSGG NPC. 
Also from our Discord, it's been a while since we featured some good uh, fetish videos. This, I think this is a new one for me. Bike pump fetish. Although it's more than that. It's, it's, it's inflation. It's an inflation fetish. This guy takes a bike pump. He has got a huge clear hose attached to the bike pump, right? And he's able to jam this hose down his throat. And he continues pushing it lower and lower into his body until he says it's in his stomach. Whereupon he begins to utilize the bike pump. He starts pumping. His stomach starts uh, being pushed outward, being filled with air. And then the very last thing he does, he detaches the hose from, from the bike pump and puts a balloon over that end of the hose. And the air that is in his stomach begins to fill up the balloon. The balloon expands. First, I need to inflate my stomach. Right. Step one, inflate the stomach with the bike, uh, bike pump. So the hose is going down more and more and more. It's the hose all the way down into his stomach. And that's when he uses the bike pump. And you can see his stomach growing larger. Now, there's no nudity here. He's wearing like a pretty pair of underwear, I guess. I'm going to try to make this uh, an animated GIF or something so you guys can see what's going on. At least the part where he blows open or blows up the uh, the balloon. He's putting the balloon on right now. And you can hear it being inflated. He's not blowing. All the air is coming from his guts. This guy is really into all sorts of uh, belly play, including belly button stretching. He's got, he's got an innie and he takes a pair of like uh, pliers or a speculum or something, and he jams this device in his belly button and then uh, opens it up to stretch the belly button out. Oh, my belly button is bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, it hurts. <laughs> Should be noted, this guy is in Ukraine. Can't be that bad over there. Round number two. I know they're supposed to be going through some war, but if this guy has time to stretch his belly button open, people aren't taking this war too seriously. All of these videos are only about like 30 seconds to a minute long. He really wants you to sign up for his OnlyFans account. Here, here's a video titled The Belly Sounds. It's got a microphone down there. See what I mean? He's into all sorts of belly content. It's interesting because, uh, as I have featured, sometimes he'll jam that uh, tube down his throat. Other times, I'm pretty sure he goes up the ass. Also, some days he doesn't feel like using a bike pump and exerting all that effort. So, he pulls out the air compressor. And he inflates his gut that way. Dude is going to blow himself up one of these days, literally. By the way, as I was playing that air compressor video, I found another clip here. This is where he uses a double pump. Yes, my suspicions were confirmed. He does blow air up his asshole. And actually, in this video, he goes both ways. One down the throat and one up the ass. I hope he has those tubes marked. Because, you know, next time he wants to play, he might stick the tube that was up his ass down his throat. And, well, that's gross. Mm. There's no, you know, real great audio here. However, if you're wondering, pumping up your guts does give you some indigestion. Okay, like, I'm so confused. Did you hear that bubbling there? That is not normal. Right? <laughs> I'm King Borbin. <laughs> oh my god. You know what? I've never been entirely sure what the Russians and Ukraine were fighting about, but I think I'm on Russia's side now. <laughs> Just level that country. Uh, all right. And with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist to the fucked up news right now. All right, guys, 
if you enjoy Distorted View Daily, please consider signing up for the Sideshow. That's our member site where you gain full access to the entire archive of programs. More importantly, every week I do brand new exclusive shows just for paying freaks. This week shall be no different. Uh, tomorrow's episode of Distorted View is going to be Sideshow exclusive. If you want to hear it, you got to sign up superfreaksideshow.com plan on doing another exclusive program on Thursday. Memberships are very inexpensive, only $6.99 a month, even less when you opt for a quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. When you sign up, you get a password-protected RSS feed that works with uh, most podcasting apps like Overcast, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, you know, the big ones. For an even easier way to gain access, if you happen to use Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can sign up right in those apps. If you go that route, You'll get your Sideshow exclusive episodes uh, right in your app, right alongside the uh, the normal episodes of DV. So just a few taps, you're in, you're part of the club, you're one of my buddies, let's jerk off together, stick our fingers down our dick hole, you know the drill. For more information, check out distortedview.com and superfreaksideshow.com. One final way to help support the program, we've got a Patreon account, patreon.com slash distortedview, where you can pledge as little as a dollar over there to help me out. Uh, If you pledge at least five, you get access to a special voicemail line where I will play your calls first. Again, patreon.com slash distortedview. Thank you so much to all of my patrons. And of course, you Sideshow members, you are the reason I'm able to continue doing this very podcast. All right, three quick stories, and we'll get the hell out of here. First up, I realize at this point, uh, this first news story is really old news. I think it broke on Friday or Saturday, but it is so DV-worthy, I have to mention it. Yes, Lauren Boebert is in the news for, like, giving a dude a hand job at a performance of the musical Beetlejuice. Of course, this is the same congresswoman trying to protect our children from drag queens and gays and trans people and shit. To be fair, she was doing something incredibly straight. She was getting her tits played with and grabbing cock. At least she was keeping herself occupied while watching one of those boring-ass musicals, right? Lauren Boebert has blamed her overly animated personality for the sleazy behavior that got her and her lover kicked out of a production of Beetlejuice the Musical. I love how this whole story played out. The first thing you learn is that she was, you know, kicked out of a musical, and you don't really know why. Then there was like another news article that said, look, she was vaping and causing a disturbance and singing along and just being rowdy. And Lauren Boebert denied all of that, especially the vaping thing. She, I think she did say that she was singing along. You know, her explanation was, I'm just having a good time, but I most definitely didn't vape. And then there was actual video footage of her vaping. You saw a cloud of smoke come out of her mouth. And then just as the the, the story, the cycle was dying down, another piece comes out with additional footage where like a guy is totally playing with her tits and she's grabbing at his crotch and stuff. Oh, it is just fantastic. And then as if that wasn't enough, there, there was one additional piece of information that emerged that we'll get to in just a moment. That's it's like the cherry on top, really. Apparently, Lauren was indulging in public heavy petting with her boyfriend, Quinn Gallagher. She went on a One America News Network to defend her actions. I'm laughing because One America News is not a real news network. Uh, I was a little too eccentric. I'm very known for having an animated personality, maybe overly animated personality. I was laughing. I was singing, having a fantastic time. Having your nipples tweaked. Uh, I was told to kind of settle it down a little bit, which I did. But then my next slip up was taking a picture. Footage showed Bobert waving her hand, singing loudly, using flash photography, flash, and vaping before being aggressive with staff who removed her from the theater. The controversial congresswoman initially denied the claims, claimed the vape smoke was actually from a fog machine, and then issued a sarcastic statement playing down the anger. But then she made a U-turn, you know, after the video was released, blaming her behavior on her public and difficult divorce. Yeah, let's see if that works. The past few days have been difficult and humbling, and I'm truly sorry, she wrote in a statement. There's no perfect blueprint for going through a public and difficult divorce, which over the past few months has made a challenging personal time for me and my entire family. Speaking about the controversy, she blamed the media for drawing so much attention to her behavior. 
I'm sorry, hand jobs are always going to be front page news, at least here on TV. What's really great is that Lauren's new boyfriend here is a bar owner, and not only is the establishment LGBTQ friendly, they also have hosted drag shows. Ta da! In January, the Hooch Craft Cocktail Bar in Aspen, uh, co owned by Quinn Gallagher, staged a Winter Wonderland burlesque and drag show. In January 2020, Aspen Gay Ski Week hosted an evening of cocktails, appetizers, and laughs at Hooch. Gallagher, a Democrat. I hate to say it, but Lauren Bobert really is our Paula Abdul. We come together because I'm and Quinn here is MC Scat Cat. Gallagher, a Democrat, was caught on video getting frisky with Bo Bird, apparently grabbing her breasts, while she appeared to rub his crotch as the pair took in a performance of Beetlejuice. The two have been dating under the radar for a couple months now. I had to double check this next tweet because I, I swear to God, I thought it was parody. She actually wrote, I'm a Christian. So they may try to drive me to my knees, but that's where I'm the strongest. Ah! Yeah. It's like, we know. All right. uh, Second story we have for you today. A Ghanaian man living in Belgium became so frustrated with constantly failing the theoretical part of the driving test. He eventually just paid a lookalike to take the test in his place. Serge, a Ghanaian immigrant living in Grammont, Belgium, had been struggling to pass his driver's license exam for over a year. Now, in his home country of Ghana, he uh, obtained a driver's license. He's not a complete dum-dum, but he needed the European permit to work because his African license wasn't valid in Belgium. He and uh, his lookalike were summoned to appear before the criminal court for forgery, use of forgery, and attempted fraud. Julian, a Congolese man, who apparently uh, looked somewhat like Serge, was hired to take the test for him. The examiners noticed something was wrong, though. Now, while the two men look similar, there were differences in the shape of the face. A complaint was filed with police for forgery, use of forgery, and attempted fraud. The deputy prosecutor of the king, which to me sounds like a lawyer over there, he said without the vigilance of this person, meaning the driver's license examiner, uh, he would have received his license while he is not able to drive on our roads. The Ghanaian man stands accused of identity fraud, even though he used his real ID card. Yeah, but he gave that ID card to someone else who wasn't him. The prosecutor explained that as soon as his ID wound up in the hands of the co-defendant for the benefit of Serge, it technically became fake. Now he faces a suspended sentence of one year behind bars, while in Julian's case, prosecutors asked for 200 hours of community service. The sentence is due in a month. By the way, Serge has uh, still not gotten his driver's license, but he was able to find a job at a local packaging company that he can reach by train. So there's a bit of a happy ending there, I guess. By the way, I'm pretty sure this whole series of events was also the exact same plot line to a Sister Sister episode. I'm guessing Tia and Tamara didn't get away with their plans either, but you know, they're identical twins. That should have really been smooth sailing. I bet you somehow Tamara fucked things up. She's a loose cannon. All right, a final story we have for you to jump. An oral surgeon relentlessly sexually harassed his chauffeur, all right, obsessively talking about his own small penis and asking the driver to turn around and look while he touched himself. Why is this guy so proud of his teeny weeny? Look at it. Look what I'm doing to this thing. That poor chauffeur. A Brooklyn Supreme Court suit filed last week claimed Christopher Jackson, 43, was hired to be Dr. Gabriel Hirschman's personal driver back in April 2022. Apparently, his job was to drive him from his queen's home uh, to his Jewish studies and then to get coffee and then to his 65th Street office in Brooklyn and finally back home at the end of the day. Seems pretty straightforward, but Jackson, who lives in Brooklyn, quit his job with Hirschman and his father's medical practice on June 1st, 2022, because of incessant sexual harassment. Jackson, a father of a nine-year-old, said there is not a human being that is trying to work hard to earn a living that should have been subjected to that type of treatment, and I think it's absolutely horrible. 
Jackson worked Monday through Friday and was on call from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. to drive Hirschman around in his Cadillac Escalade, though the doctor wouldn't let Jackson use the car for any personal reasons. Okay, that's reasonable, I think, right? Starting in mid-April, Hirschman, 40, began talking about the small size of his penis, which became an obsessive topic of conversation, bringing up the topic at least four times a week including saying that he wished he could add inches to it. Well, if you can't talk about your cock size to your chauffeur, who can you talk to it about, you know? I mean, maybe this chauffeur guy is a little more uptight than me, but I would love to have someone talk to me about their tiny dick, confess how much it bothers them and how they want to add inches to it. That shit is hilarious. I mean, I would would have stories for all my friends. I'd have stories for the show. Of course, I would immediately turn around and talk to you about this on the podcast. Even if I wasn't a podcaster, I would start a podcast all about my wacky client with the tiny dick. I mean, come on, dude, unclench. The doctor also told Jackson about his horrible sex life with his wife and joked about the driver's sex life, including once telling Jackson as they passed by a motel, a, quote, fat N-word named Shaniqua would come to your room and sit on your face. You know you want that, the filing charges. The doctor also on multiple occasions allegedly asked Jackson to look at him while he rubbed his groin over his clothes. Kind of like how Lauren Boebert rubbed the groin of her boyfriend at the Beetlejuice performance. This, I agree, is way creepier, though. He would make moaning sounds and he'd say that he was about to ejaculate. Well, you know, it's common courtesy to warn someone when there's about to be ejaculate flying all over the place. Heads up! Pew, pew, pew! When Jackson uh, began refusing to look, the doctor would insist on making eye contact with him in the rearview mirror. Jackson would continually request that these conversations cease, but the doctor wouldn't relent, forcing Jackson to quit. He didn't care, Jackson said of the doctor's response when he asked him to stop. He has money, and his father has money, and he thinks that is something that's going to save him from everything. Jackson said Hirschman's conduct is even worse, considering he works in the medical profession and is an honorary NYPD surgeon. Hirschman has everything, Jackson said, including a wife and kids, a multi-million dollar home, and a thriving business. He walks around like he's a model citizen in his religious community, in the business community, and also in the New York City Police Department as well. I hope that he's held accountable, Jackson added. I hope he doesn't do that to anyone else. When he finally did decide to quit, he confronted Hirschman with a recording he'd taken of the alleged misconduct. The doctor didn't deny anything. I mean, he couldn't. It was it was a recording. Uh, instead, he apologized and said he was just joking and it was all locker room talk. The former driver is suing Hirschman, his dad, and the practice for unspecified damages over an alleged hostile work environment and for allegedly stiffing Jackson on overtime wages despite his being on call for roughly 70 hours a week. Jason Zoldesi, a lawyer for Hirschman in the company, said Mr. Jackson is someone who admittedly has been dealing with mental health issues. When confronted with his termination, he fabricated this salacious narrative. Our clients intend to fight the claims aggressively. Again, the dude has the recording, so I don't know. You're going to have to come up with a good explanation for that. Jackson's lawyer said, we find it ludicrous that Dr. Hirschman, instead of taking responsibility for his atrocious conduct, is now trying to spin the narrative that Mr. Jackson was somehow terminated. We look forward to addressing this in court. Ooh, I hope we have a distorted view update on this, and I hope that audio recording is released. This could become our trial of the century, you know? All right, there you go. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Monday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of yeah. Love to hear from you freaks, and there are many ways to contact the program. Show at distortedview.com. I'm all over social media at distortedview on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash distortedview show. I'm also on threads and blue sky and all sorts of other social media apps and sites that no one uses. All right, uh, let's check in with a few freaks here. Yes, we've got some patrons calling in. This is Rabbit's Moo, and holy crap. It since I don't know if you ever covered Chris Chan, but he's out and already back on the internet. What? That you'd like to know. Well, I knew that he was out, right? But I didn't realize that he had returned to the internet. Where 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 are these clips? <laughs> Come on, freaks. I'm hoping you I hoping this is accurate information because I could go for some new Chris Chan content. By the way, 
I find it really odd that, uh, well, when was Chris Chan arrested? Like a year or two ago? He didn't really do a lot of time for fucking his elderly, dementia-ridden mother. The justice system really seems to be a goddamn joke here, doesn't it? Timothy James Henson. Sweet toilet again. Uh, but I'm calling for a very specific reason. I was craving something that hasn't happened in the voicemail segment in a long time, so I thought I would reintroduce it so that we could, uh, you know, have it, have it pop up again. Let me guess, voicemail wars. You hate Haley's Comet. Join the fucking club. Uh, fuck you, Tim. No, fuck, fuck you. you. Fuck no, you. Fuck you, fuck you asshole. You fuck no, yourself. fuck you. Fuck no, go you, fuck Tim. yourself. Fuck you off. find fuck yourself. You, find yourself fuck and you. fuck yourself. Fuck you. Find your fuck hole, you. your fucking asshole, and fuck it in your fuck. Fuck face. Uh, hi, I'm listening to uh, episode... <laughs> I'm a little rusty there. <laughs> find your... Asshole and <laughs> fuck your fuck, fuck face. Hi, I'm listening to an episode from uh, July 31st, uh, shit, three years ago, 2020, and you're talking, what were you, were you talking to a midget on the sex line, which is just the most hilarious fucking thing I've heard in a long time. And also, this guy who had like I a- I forgot that, I talked to a real live midget on the sex line. Here in the M, that's in the news, uh, you're an EM infection, you're like, how the hell does that happen? Well, I'll tell you how it happens. It's a fucking side effect of certain medications. It's like, uh, like Guardians, whatever commercials, like, hey, guess what? Yeah, you don't, you don't keep your heart healthy. But yeah, there's also a very high chance that your perineum and your taint will just be infected. Yeah, that's an insane side effect for something that should have nothing to do with that area. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... Jardians is for people with type 2 diabetes or something, right? Or heart failure or something. It has nothing to do with cock and balls and taints and stuff. Why would an infection form down there by taking Jardians? Which is a horrible name for a drug, by the way. I don't like that name, Jardians. It reminds me of, like, jaundice. You know what's a good name for uh, a medication? Sky Rizzy. I don't, it doesn't sound like medication to me. It, I don't, but it sounds good. It sounds like something very positive. Sky Rizzy. You're rising up in the sky. This drug will kill you. and You'll go to heaven. I don't know what Sky Rizzy is for. It's probably for diabetes, but I would love to be on it. Also, Just to say I'm on Sky Rizzy. Fun fact. In those sounds way better than Metoparol, which I'm on. Commercials, it says something, something, perineum, also called a tape, like in the small print <laughs> yeah. where it's talking about it as a side effect. But you may know this body part as the taint. I think it's also <laughs> hilarious. All right, well, thank you very much for the information. Uh, let's end it right there. That is all the time we have on this edition of the show. I want you guys to email me. Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you, 206-666-4463. That's 206-666. Oh, God, is it oh, God. So what happened was for about 10 days in a row, I crapped my pants by accident. Spread the distortion. STD, tell all your friends about the program. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or like wherever. You can rate and review podcasts. Tomorrow's episode is going to be sideshow exclusive. If you want to hear it, you got to sign up. Otherwise, I'll see you back on Wednesday. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody. There's one thing that all of us should be aiming for, and that is the snatch. This has been another excellent podcast from the Scrod Media Group. Learn more at scrod.net.